everyone. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Judiciary Committee meeting. Uh, the nine th we're starting with the 930 agenda. Uh, let me read through the, uh, the required opening announcements. Uh, my name is Carl Rhodes. I'm the chair of the committee. This Zoom meeting and YouTube live stream event will include the following three um, agendas for, for the Judiciary Committee. This 930 uh, DM agenda from a me measure that we heard earlier, 931 JDC agenda, which is a hearing on JDC singles and a 945 JDC agenda for um, just uh, decision making only. Members of the committee are J Vice Chair Jarrett Keokalule, who's here. Senator Ocasio is also present. Senator Gabbard is here. Senator Lee, Senator Kim, and Senator Favela all would appear to be here as well. Thank you for all being here. This meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely, unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Monday, March 1st, 9.45 a.m., and it will be a video conference and a, a public notice will be posted on the website. For the people testifying remotely, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn to testify. There is a two minute limit for testifier. If there are temporary technical glitches during your turn to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to the time constraints, but we will try to come back to you if can. And we appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has already received your written testimony. Um, I will be reading a list of people who submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed captioning doesn't accurately describe the names or if I butcher your name. If you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website, www.capitalwithano.hawaii.gov. You will find a link to testimony in the status page for the measure that you're interested in. And I believe that's it. Let's go ahead and get started here. Senator Rhodes, will you please wait a moment? Um, sure. I'm getting a call from folks watching the live stream saying they cannot hear you. Um, My, IT, will you please uh, look into this? Oh, yes, sir. Just give us one moment. Yeah. Thank you. But you guys can hear me? I mean, yeah, okay. Sorry, Senator Rhodes, you can continue. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Do I need to repeat the uh, the opening stuff and opening announcements? Um, I believe not. You can continue. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, the one bill on this agenda is SB 1289. This expands access of election watchers during elections to include all instances in which ballots are handled, prepared, tabulated, or reviewed. Um, so this is just a, a decision making only from a bill that we heard on, I think, the 16th. The recommendation here is to go ahead and pass it, but with some pretty significant amendments. Um, hang on, let me find them. So we'll request that the Elections Commission, in consultation with county clerks, to assess whether watcher and observer programs are adequate and to recommend uh, legislation, if any, in a report due 40 days before the opening of the 2022 regular session. Questions or concerns on this one? If not, Senator Kio Kaloli for the vote. Uh, Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Gab uh, Acasio. Aye. Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Kim. Aye. 
Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Uh, chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much, members. We'll go ahead and move on to our 931 agenda. This is the hearing agenda. Uh, first up on this one is SB 1050. This adds the Department of the Attorney General to the list of agencies that are authorized to conduct criminal history record checks on current or prospective employees or contractors who have access to federal tax information. Uh, first up on this one is, uh, yes, Isaac Choi for the Director of Department of Taxation or his designee. Good morning, Marky on behalf of the Department of Taxation and Isaac Choi. The department would stand on a written testimony uh, in support of this measure. I'll be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Christopher D.W. Young, Administrator HCJD for the Attorney General. Or Philip Higdon, I'm sorry. Philip, Mr. Higdon, yes. go ahead. Yes. Uh, good morning, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Philip Higdon, Assistant Administrator with the Hawaii Criminal Justice Data Center. Uh, the department strongly supports this bill. Uh, in summary, this bill would allow the department as a whole statutory authority uh, to comply with federal law. Uh, testimony has been provided, and I'm willing to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, to, uh, next is Riker Wada for uh, Department of Human Resource Development and support, and that's all the testimony we have. Members, any questions? Okay, let me check. I think for Mr. Higdon with the AG, um, how has the state been assessing current or prospective employees and contractors who have access to federal information? Current, what do you do currently? Well, I, I can only speak for what the Hawaii Criminal Justice Data Center does and that okay. we, yeah, yes, sir. What do you do? Well, we do, uh, we do perform background checks on our employees and any contractors that come in due to the fact of the information that we store here uh, at the center. Okay. Um, okay. Um, All right, I guess none, none of these are really relevant, not ones that you're gonna be able to answer. Okay, uh, that's it, members, any other questions? Okay, thank you, uh, thank you for sir. being here to testify and we'll go ahead and move on to the next bill. Uh, next is SB 697 relating to Kalapapa month. Uh, first up on 697 is Department of Health uh, in support, Joseph Lapilio for Ka Ohana o Kalapapa. Good morning. Good, good, good morning. Uh, thank you. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Joseph Apilio, Executive Director of Kahana o Kalapapa. Uh, we are in support of the bill and asking for your support. Just three things I wanna, I wanna uh, mention. Number one is a bill like this went through the Senate and was uh, sent over to the House last year, but because of COVID, um, the whole process stopped. Uh, last year, we had uh, Uncle Boogie Kahili Hiva um, come and speak on behalf of the bill. Um, the patients that we have left are getting older, uh, no longer able to attend, so I am here to speak on his behalf. We did um, submit a request for an amendment to the bill, and that is embedded in the testimony. And so I'd really um, like to ask your support for this so that we can create Kalapapa Month while our remaining 12 patient residents are, are still here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Lynn Murakami Akatsuka in support, Valerie Monson in support, DeGray Vanderbilt in support. And that's all the on all the testimony we have on SB 697. Members, any question for Mr. Lapilio? Check. I think I'm good. Thank you for thank you for attending. We'll go ahead thank and move you. on. If there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and move on to SB 711. Uh, this requires all letterhead documents, symbols, and emblems of the state and other political subdivisions that include Hawaiian words or names to include accurate and appropriate Hawaiian name spellings and, and punctuation. Uh, establishes references for accurate, appropriate, and authentic Hawaiian names and words, including proper. No, that's sort of okay. Uh, 
clarifies that the full text of bills and other official documents are not required to be written in Hawaiian and that misspelled or incorrectly punctuated Hawaiian words and names shall not invalidate the documents or render them unenforceable and no cause of action shall arise accordingly. Okay, first up on 711 is Office of Hawaiian Affairs in support. Uh, Craig Iha, Deputy Attorney General with comments. Women Hoshijo, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission in support. Kapuna for the Mo'opuna in support. Daniel Lee in support. Rikako Ishiki in support. That's all the testimony we have and no one to ask questions of. So we'll go ahead and move on uh, to SB 726. SB 726 prohibits the issuance of warrants that permit entry by an officer to a house store or other building without first audibly declaring the officer's office and business, including no knock warrants. Requires law enforcement officials, officers serving an arrest warrant at a house or a search warrant at a house store or other building to audibly declare the officer's. Now well, that seems like that's said twice. Okay. Uh, first up on SB 726 is. Albert Cook, a Deputy Attorney General in opposition. James Tabe for the Public De Office of the Public Defender. I think I saw him. Yes, Mr. Tabe, good morning. Good morning. Uh, James Tabe with the Public Defender's Office. Uh, the, our office generally supports the, uh, this bill. Uh, we do have one concern, however, and it's pointed out in our written testimony, is the time uh, limit that's set or the time designation of 30 seconds. Um, as you, as our testimony and other testimonies indicate, there is a recent Supreme Court case that indicated 25 seconds wasn't enough under those circumstances of that case. I'm afraid that well, if we set 30 seconds, law enforcement may think that that's enough time for most situations. Um, I think in better language would be to replace 30 seconds with the term reasonable time or something to that effect. Um, it's just want to just point out the importance of a validly executed warrant. Number one, it, it protects the privacy rights of, our, of the citizens. But number two, it will benefit law enforcement and the prosecutor agencies because if they do go in too early, the evidence is just going to get tossed and the conviction is going to get thrown out basically. So um, it's important that, that we have a bill for going to set a time limit that the police won't rely on it um, mistakenly and think 30 seconds is enough in, in most circumstances. Um, otherwise, I'll stand on my testimony at this time and I'm available for further questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next up is Trisha Nakamatsu, a Deputy Prosecuting Attorney. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Deputy Prosecutor Trisha Nakamatsu. On behalf of the Honolulu Prosecuting Attorney's Department, we are uh, we're just expressing concerns about this bill, and it's one of those few instances where we actually share the concerns of the public defender. Um, the 30 seconds we feel would be too much of a bright line rule based on that same case that uh, public defender Tabe was discussing, Zibi um, Naiole. There are, uh, it's, it's a totality of the circumstances analysis, and we feel that setting a specific time frame on it is, is just not in anyone's best interest because there are circumstances and in that state in Iole, we mentioned um, the court discussed a case in which 15 seconds in one instance was considered constitutional. And that was just because those particular circumstances, it was in a business during business hours, there was someone in the office. Um, but these are all things that need to be taken into account um, and what type of case it is, what they're searching for. Um, but be that as it may, we do feel that the any type of um, minimum time put into the bill would not be appropriate. Um, we also note that we're not exactly sure where the reference to no-knock warrants came from because we weren't able to find any reference to no-knock warrants in statute or penal procedure, rules of penal procedure. And finally, the helmets, I'm sorry, the uniforms, we'd just like to make sure that the when they have to wear full battle dress gear, that that would be also included as uniform and understood. Thank you, we're available for questions. Thank you, next is uh, Mark Thompson for Honolulu Police Department. 
Uh, don't see Mr. Thompson. Uh, they're in op the opposition. Greg Okamoto for Maui Police Department. Also in opposition. Um, John Bickle, Americans for Democratic Action and Support. Nikos Leverance, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. Um, who has signed up, but I don't see him. But they're in support. Kat Brady, Community Alliance on Prisons. Don't see her either. They're in support. Mandy Fernandez, ACLU of Hawaii, did see her. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Mandy Fernandez on behalf of the American Civil Liberties Union of Hawaii. We strongly support this measure. On March 14, 2020, Breonna Taylor was murdered in her own home in Louisville, Kentucky during a botched no-knock raid by Louisville Metro Police who were wearing plain clothes. While Ms. Taylor's murder renewed national attention on the issue of no-knock warrants at raids, she is far from the first victim of this practice, which has racist roots and is disproportionately deployed against communities of color, particularly Black communities. Three states have expressly uh, banned the issuance of no-knock warrants. No-knock and quick-knock raids rely on the element of surprise and increase the probability of violence. Imagine if someone suddenly forced their way into your home early in the morning while you were sleeping, you would probably reasonably believe they were burglars and react to defend your family. SB 726 would not only expressly prohibit no-knock warrants, but it would also create a baseline period of time for how long officers must wait before forcing their way onto a property. This is just a baseline, so we're just saying you can, there might be circumstances where officers were required to wait more than 30 seconds, and it would be up to the court to determine that what would meet the constitutional standard of reasonableness. But as um, the deputy uh, prosecutor testified previously, there are cases where they said 15 seconds was enough. So we're just, we are, we are establishing this baseline standard beyond which the courts could still interpret that more time was necessary, and we see a lot of value in that. We have offered uh, clarifying language as an amendment to just make it even more clear that courts could still determine that more than 30 seconds was necessary, given the particular facts and circumstances of the case. Uh, finally, we suggested amendments to narrow the exigent circumstances referenced in the bill to only those that are imminently life-threatening, because preserving human life is much more important than preserving evidence or property. We sincerely hope you move this bill forward and we're available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Will Carone, Young Progressives Demanding Action in support. Lori Field, Planned Parenthood Votes Northwest in Hawaii in support. Lori Tomchak, uh, League of Women Voters in support. Cheryl B. in support. Okay, then we have um, more than a page of individual testifiers. Uh, looks like all but one are in support. And I won't bother to read everybody's name, but it's about 25, I guess, in support and one against, one or two against. Okay, members on SB 726, any questions? Senator Gabbard, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I was, you know, the last hearing we had the ASL interpreter on there and I was, I was just thinking, how does this apply to those who are deaf and uh, hard to hear? You know, if generally speaking, if you're unable to hear the officer's voice and the officer breaks down the door, uh, who's going to pay for the door? Who's going to pay for the damages? You Who would you like to ask? I guess HPD or, or if, if they're, uh, yeah. I don't, think, I don't think they were, I don't think they were here. Are they, uh, maybe the public defender or the. Public Defender, you, uh, Mr. Tommy, you still here? Yes, I am. Um, in the scenario uh, Senator Gabbard <clears throat> indicated, I would hope that the police know that there's a residence is is um, is is hearing impaired because um, they have all this information uh, gathered prior to having a warrant signed. I would think a reasonable time, we, what we would argue if they had gone in within 30 seconds is not enough time at that point. Um, uh, I would hope that they wouldn't do it at 6 a.m. in the morning uh, because of that in, in, in situation. Chances are if the fact pattern, if it did happen 30 seconds at 6 a.m. in the morning, I would have, I believe we would have a, a very good chance of 
suppressing the evidence at that time. As for damages, that's a civil matter. So I don't, I can't, um, I would, uh, usually police officers and agencies, I think they're immune to that, but I would have to leave that to Corp Council or the Attorney General's office to, to answer the civil questions. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any other questions on this one? Yeah, Chair. Um, Senator Favela. There, there, is a, there is a law, um, any warrants being served, it has to be daylight hours. Nobody comes to somebody's house six in the morning Busting down doors. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Chair, are, so, are we able to address um, the issues that the both the public defender and the prosecuting attorney um, raise as far as the time? Uh, well, after we're done questioning, yeah, we can we can oh, when yeah. we get to decision making, yeah. But okay. Any, thank you. Any, any questions at this point? No, thank you. Um, yeah, I wish the police were here. I uh, maybe uh, Ms. Nakamatsu, can I ask you? I know you're not the police. I get that, so I, I'll, I won't hold you to 100 percent uh, knowledge. But I, it seems like as a matter of procedure that uh, the police departments would be very concerned about. Um, the situation that's been described before where somebody bursts in while people are not fully awake or it, without any warning because there's plenty of guns in Hawaii and you're liable to get shot. And do you know if that factors into any of the standard operating procedures? Um, I'm not, I don't know their exact operating procedures. I knew, know there are guidelines. I know that they look at each case separately depending on what they're expecting based on all the information that they have. Mm -hmm. um, in this particular case, the Sabi and Iole that we were mentioning, they had a number of officers, um, I believe 16 officers. They were dressed in um, what is referred to as battle dress or battle gear. So they were in body armor, reinforced helmets, um, and they, based on their information, they were ready for whatever they thought could have been coming their way at that time. Um, but also just to address um, Senator Fravella's concern about the time, and this ties into your question as well, Chair, that um, if they if there is a request to go outside of the statutory time frame, the court, the issuing court can allow that. And they take any number of factors into consideration before um, allowing that. I'm sorry, allow what you mean in terms of whether- Outside of that time frame that's in statute. The statute also says that they can, it doesn't have to be- um, I don't think it was daylight hours. I think it's actually specific hours. But outside of those specific daytime hours, the court can allow search warrants to be served. But there has to be a specific determination. Um, a reason um, for based it. on, yeah, very specific. Yes, findings. Yeah, that sounds familiar now that you mention it. Um, okay. So yes, they are very they are very cautious about it. They're very aware um, that that they're never exactly sure what's going to happen once they knock on that door. Right. And they try to be as prepared as they can. Okay. Okay, members, any other questions? If not, thanks. Thank you to the testifiers for being here. We'll go ahead and move on to SB 826 relating to sex offenders. This prohibits a sex offender from residing within 2,000 feet of the sex offender's former victim or the victim's immediate family members. It requires the covered offender to receive approval from the AG and the Attorney General prior to a change of address. Uh, first up on 826 is... Uh, Michelle M. L. Putin, Deputy Attorney General, uh, in opposition. Darcia Foster or William Bento for Public Defender. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, William thank Bento of the Public Defender's Office. Uh, we are in opposition to SB 826. We did submit written testimony. However, I wanted to add two other things. Uh, one, for the law to work as it's written uh, and for there to be a prosecution uh, the actual offender will need to know where the victim or the victim's family members live down to the foot because in order for there to be an arrest or a conviction, the person would have to be within that 2,000 feet. And so he would have to, he or she would have to know where the victim lives and be able to take that measurement as it's described in the radius. Um, and we do feel that that would be uh, in opposition to what the bill I think is hoping to achieve one to keep people away from their victims and also uh, so that the 
covered offender doesn't know where the victim or the victim's family lives. Also, subsection C uh, says that before the covered offender can change address, they have to get permission of the attorney general. Well, you know, this creates several issues, one of which is if the covered offender were to discover that he or she is in violation of this law, they would have to move immediately. Otherwise, they would be in further violation of the law, but to do so would violate the law in and of itself because they would do so without the permission of the attorney general's office. And so uh, it does pose some serious issues here. I think the purpose of the bill is understandable. And I think other ways can be worked out to ensure that that there is no uh, that there's no violation of this 2000 foot um, uh, radius. But um, I don't think the way the bill is written is going to achieve that. Thank you. And we'll be available for questions. Great. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Randall Platt, uh, Honolulu Police Department. I uh, don't see. Mr. Platt, uh, in support, uh, Max Otani for Public Department of Public Safety in opposition, George King also for Public Safety with comments, Michael Galoyu for Rangel Family 808 in support, Kerry Urasevich, Early Childhood Action Strategy in support, Christine Johnson in support, and E. Ileina Funakoshi in opposition. That's all the testimony we have on SB 826. Would anyone, any questions, members? Um, Mr. Bento, can you come back up? Yes, Senator. So you said you thought you had other ideas about how to enforce the, the, the 2000 foot limit. I'd be interested in hearing them. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky bill. It's a tricky to a topic. Well, sir, I think one of the things that could could be done is let's say that a victim or a member of the victim's family were to see the, the covered offender in the neighborhood or in the area. Um, they could contact the AG's office and let the AG's office know that they saw the covered offender in this area. Uh, then the AG's office can check to see where the covered offender lives and they will know where the victim or the victim's family lives and they could see whether that person is living within or outside the 2000 foot uh, <clears throat> area. Uh, we don't really want the victim or the victim family to know where the perpetrator or the, the, the covered offender lives as well, because we know that that can create some issues also. So uh, if we use the AG's office sort of as a go-between, uh, if in fact the person is living within the 2000 foot radius, then they can be notified and given a reasonable amount of time to leave that area. Uh, if they're not, then the AG's office can let the victim's family or the victim or victim's family member know that the person does not live within the 2000 foot radius. And then now nobody needs to know where each other lives. The person is, uh, the covered offenders living outside of that area and you know, nobody needs to, uh, I, I don't think there'll be any issues as far as um, people needing, people knowing where each other lives and, and, and the associated problems that that goes with. Um, so, I can so understand that you want to have some means of enforcing this, but I think if you give the covered offender a reasonable amount of time to leave the 2000 foot radius uh, and, and it's told that they can live in an area on this street or, or on this boulevard or something of that nature, then, you know, it's, it's a little more vague and they won't be able to find out where the family member or the victim lives. Um, but you, don't, you don't think there's any legal impediment to, okay, so let's say, say a family member sees the, the, the perpetrator and they, they notify the AG, as you suggest, and the AG comes back and says, oh, you can't live there. Um, does that, I mean, can you, can the AG order somebody to, okay, so they just bought this condo three months ago. And so now you have to leave. I mean, you don't have to sell it. You could rent it to somebody else, but is that, is well, that what, constitutional? Think, well, I, what I'm trying to say, I think is if in fact you, we were to uh, get over all of those constitutional types of hurdles, then this is a process by which you could, you could work this out. Uh, I'm not conceding 
that it's constitutional to be able to tell somebody where they can live uh, or that, like you said, that they would have to move in the, from the condo that they just purchased or something of that nature. Now, the bill does take into consideration if a covered offender establishes residence in that area um, and the victim or victim's family moves into the area, then they can't be forced to leave. So, you know, I mean, the only other way I could see it is if a uh, covered offender is going to move into a certain place, they get permission from the AGs in order to do so, because the AGs will be able to do an investigation to see that the person's not within the 2,000 feet. Okay. Uh, but it does, I mean, it greatly limits, I think, uh, especially in Honolulu with limited housing, where a person can and cannot live. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Members, any other questions? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's see, next up is SB 828 relating to divorce. It grant, grants exclusive original jurisdiction in matters of divorce to the family court of the circuit in which an applicant is domiciled at the time the application is filed. It appeals the requirement that a person be domiciled or physically present in the state for a continuous period of at least six months before completing a divorce. First up on 828 is uh, Judge Christine Kuriyama with the judiciary. Don't see Judge Kuriyama uh, with comments. Nancy Creedman, Domestic Violence Action Center in support. Lori Field, Planned Parenthood votes in Northwestern Hawaii, also in support. Young G, Young He Overly, AAUW of Hawaii in support, and Thomas Farrell uh, in support. And that's all the written testimony we have. I mean, all the testimony we have on 828. And we don't have anybody to ask questions of members, so we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, SB 829. This relates to the abuse of a family or household member as course of control between family or household members to the offense of abuse of a family or household members as a petty misdemeanor. Uh, first up on 828, I mean, on 829, excuse me, is uh, Darcia, Darcia Forrester or William Bento for the Office of Public Defender. Morning again. Good morning again. Uh, the Office of the Public Defender strongly opposes SB 829. We've submitted our written testimony and will be available uh, for questions later. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Trisha Nakamatsu, Deputy Prosecuting Attorney. Doesn't say that you're signed up for this one. I don't chair, see. Oh, Chair, Vice Chair. Oh, sorry, okay. I apologize. Um, Deputy, Deputy Prosecuting Attorney Mark Tom for the Department of the Prosecuting Attorneys of Honolulu. Um, uh, submitting testimony, just expressing concerns. Uh, just what we read, wrote in our testimony, just concerned with the broad nature, creating unintended consequences of, of the language of course of control as defined in 586-1. Additionally, um, as the committee knows, um, Act 19 from last year uh, created the petty misdemeanor offense. Uh, the department is just a little concerned uh, that we haven't seen um, Act 19 actually play out due to COVID and um, the petty misdemeanor going into effect in January of 2021. Uh, we just suggest that the prudent nature at this point is to just see how Act 19 plays out. Um, we do, as we address to the committee uh, before Act 19 was passed, we do anticipate legal impediments moving forward with it. And we want to kind of work through those before we start adding additional um, terms into Act 19, which is a pilot project. We'll be here for um, questions. Thank you. Angelina Mercado for Hawaii State uh, Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Keoho Kalole and members of the committee. I'm Angelina Mercado, Executive Director of the Hawaii State Coalition Against Domestic Violence. I stand on my written testimony in support of this measure and am available for any questions you and the committee members may have. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Nancy Friedman, Domestic Violence Action Center and support Michael Goyu Sr. Rainbow Family 808 in support, Kerry Urasevich Ura uh, for Early Childhood Action Strategy in support, Young He Overly, AAUW of Hawaii in support, Geisha Della Pena in support, Randall Platt for Honolulu Police Department with comments, Jessica Munoz for Ho'ola Ho Napua, and she's in support as well. And that's all the testimony we have. Members on, eight, on SB 829, do you have any questions? 
Um, I do have a question for Mr. Tom, if you're still here. Yes, sir. So if we were to put in this uh, coercion, um, coercive control language into Act 19, uh, into because it's a five-year pilot, the way it's written now, it's just or, it just makes it, it's another basis for the petty misdemeanor. So it doesn't really, it, well, I, I guess the question is how would it interfere with what's already there because it is a separate basis for the petty misdemeanor? Well, um, we didn't mention, you know, we do understand that it is an or. And so that's why in our testimony, it's just expressing concerns uh, what well, we did want to let the committee know that, you know, we do realize that this is almost like adding another tool to the tool belt. So we just, if we don't charge it based on the fact that it's very difficult or impossible for us to prosecute, we just want the committee to know where our position is on the language that, um, so it's not that we're not charging it or we're, you know, not utilizing the tools that we're given. We just want the committee to know that there are some concerns that we might not be able to proceed forward. So if there's no charging under this section, it's not like we're not trying to, that we just have concerns on how the language is written, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, understood. Okay, members, any other questions? Uh, seeing none, I think we're ready to do some voting. Um, Members, do you, do you feel the need to go into a, a, a breakout room? Anything controversial that you want to discuss? Or can I just go ahead and do uh, recommendations and we'll go from there? Okay, it looks like without objection, we'll go ahead and just go straight to a, a DM for the hearing agenda. So that starts with SB 1050. This adds the Department of the Attorney General on the, to the list of agencies that are authorized to conduct criminal history record checks or perspective on, on criminal prospective employees or contractors who have access to federal tax information. Um, the re recommendation is to pass with a couple of amendments with text. We have some text and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the, uh, the chapter 91 exemption. I'm not sure why it's there. And I would have liked to have asked AG about that, but since they weren't here, uh, it'll just have to move on and we'll see what we see what they, uh, if the if a house committee hears it, what they do with it. So that's the recommendation text and, and exempt and delete the not, chapter 91 exemption, which is Administrative Procedures Act. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Keo Kaloli. Members voting on SB 1050, uh, the recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Kim. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to SB 697. This re is relating to Kawa Papa Month. Um, the recommendation is to pass with some amendments. We'd like to add to the new statute proposed by the bill an ex explanation of why January is being designated as Kawa Papa Month, to revise and expand the historical information in the preamble, and following our general uh, drafting practices to not mention specific organizations We'll delete the reference in the preamble to the Hawaii Conference of the United Church of Christ. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 697, the recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, uh, are there any reservations? Is there any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Moving on to SB 711 relating to Hawaiian, uh, Alelo, Hawaii, requires all letterheads, documents, symbols, and emblems of the state and other political subdivisions that include Hawaiian words or names to include accurate and appropriate Hawaiian names, spelling, and punctuation. Um, I, I'm going to defer this only because uh, SB 1413, which has already passed, I believe, out of its last committee, um, added in all of SB 6, 711. So this language is already included in another bill. So I'm gonna defer. 
Uh, moving on to SB 726 relating to policing prohibits the issuance of warrants that permit entry by an officer to a house store or other building without first audibly declaring the office, official, officer's office and business, including no knock warrants. Uh, recommendation here. Recommendation here, I think, is just to leave it as is for the moment. We'll see what happens in the House, but the uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Carol Kowalik. Members, voting on SB 726, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any reservations? No vote for me. No vote for Senator Favela. Any other reservations or opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 826. This prohibits a sex offender from residing within 2,000 feet of the sex offender's former victim or the victim's immediate family members. Uh, it's a very tricky bill. I'd, I'd like to keep it moving. Um, I think what I will suggest is just a technical change to change the term covered offender to sex offender in order for the title to match the content. And also I'd like to put in the committee language, um, ask the next committee that looks at this to consider the uh, public defender's idea of a notification process where the, uh, where the, uh, the offender would have to check with the AGs before they moved into a certain location to be sure that they weren't within the 2000 feet, but hopefully that would put, create a little distance. But I don't, I, don't think I'm, I don't think we have the language ready to go. So I don't wanna, I'm not gonna try to do that today. So just put the, we'll put that in committee language and move it with the, with the uh, amendment that I, I suggested already. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 826, the recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, members, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to SB 828 relating to divorce, grants exclusive original jurisdiction in matters of divorce to the family court of the circuit in which an applicant is domiciled at the time the application is filed. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions, concerns? Seeing on, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 828, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations or opposition? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thanks very much. Next up is SB 829, relating to abuse of a family or household member as course of control between family or household members, the offense of abuse of family member or household members as a petty misdemeanor. Uh, recommendation is to go ahead and move it ahead, but um, we'll make it, we'll specify that this will amend Act 19 from 2020, which is the uh, bill we passed last year to provide for a petty misdemeanor for DV, for domestic violence cases. And, and then it, so we'll specify that it, be, that it will amend Act 19 and that it will be included in the Act 19 five-year pilot program. So I, I think as the uh, Deputy Prosecutor Tom indicated, it's an or, so they don't have to use it uh, and it doesn't interfere with any of the rest of the, uh, of that, uh, that statute or that, I guess it's a session law because it's not permanent, but um, in any case, I think it won't, it, at the very least, it won't hurt anything. Any questions or concerns? Chair? Yeah, Senator uh, Just, um, I, I, uh, I do support the intent and I, I think it's a really important bill. Although um, in reading the public defender's opinion, um, I do, you know, I have some concerns. It's a little, it is a little bit vague in, in some areas. So I'm gonna re vote with reservations. Okay, thank no, you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 829, the chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting the reservations of Senator Ocasio, uh, are there any other members with reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, chair, recommendation adopted. All right, thank you members. That concludes the 931 agenda and it is, uh, the next agenda is 9, 945 agenda. This is a DM only agenda, so we'll plow through a bunch more votes here. Uh, 
Uh, first up on the 945 agenda is SB 1134, broadens the Department of Human Services employees right of entry into vulnerable adults' premises from physical abuse to abuses as, as, as defined in section 346.222. So very, it broadens the number of abuses that can be um, where the Department of Human Services employees can um, have a right of entry. Um, I'm I'm dubious about the um, the the uh, how many situations the right of entry is being proposed for. So I'm going to put a bad date on it, May 6, 2137, and I'll put in some committee language uh, expressing my and the committee's concerns about how many situations the right of entry would apply. Uh, I don't have I haven't had a chance to talk to the prior chair, and um, so I'd like to just move ahead with that with those caveats. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 1134 SD1. The chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 134. This prohibits the governor or the mayor from suspending requests for public records or vital statistics during a declared state of emergency. Uh, recommendation here is to uh, just, we'll just put a bad date on it, uh, May 6, 2137, and that's the only amendment. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Doesn't it already have a bad date? Uh, yeah, maybe it does. Hang on. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's just pass it unamended. Good point. Unamended. Vice okay, Chair. members, yeah. voting on SB 134, SD1, passing unamended. Are there any no's or reservations? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 193 relating to equitable gender representation on corporate boards. Requires publicly held domestic corporations to have a gender diverse board of directors. Uh, uh, Chair, you skipped SB 1388. Again. Yeah, you missed one. Sorry. Hmm. Oh, there it is. You're right. Thank you for catching me. Uh, 1388 extends the period for a, remote, a notice of summary possession from five to 15 days. Requires landlords to provide notice with specified terms and enter into mediation. Um, so on this one, the recommendation is to pass uh, with just a bad date, uh, May 6, 2137. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 1388, SD1, the Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting all members are present. Are there any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next up is the one I started on before, SB 193, relating to equitable, equity, equitable gender representation on corporate boards. Uh, requires publicly held domestic corporations to have a gender diverse board of directors. Uh, recommendations to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, SB 193, SD1, passing unamended. Are there any reservations or opposition? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 280, codifies the administrative rule definition of assistance animal, clarifies the type of verification an individual may provide to substantiate a reasonable accommodation request for a specific assistance animal, specifies that possession of a vest or other distinguishing animal garment tag or registration document commonly purchased online and purporting to identify an animal as a service animal or assistance animal does not constitute valid verification of a disability related need for an assistance animal. Uh, recommendation here is to pass unamended. Questions, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Uh, members voting on SB 280, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Are there any reservations or opposition? Reservation. Reservations for Senator Favela. Any other reservations or no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. 
Thank you. Next up is SB 376 relating to noise. Prohibits use, sale, alteration, or installation of motor uh, vehicle mufflers that emit more than 95 de decibels of sound. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members SB 376 as is. Uh, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 428 specifies that interference with an automated public transit operation is unlawful and is a class C felony. Uh, recommendation here is also to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Senator Keo Kaloli. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Senator Casio. I'm ahead. sorry. Um, I'm, I feel like this one is really overly broad. Um, just because of the nature of the word recklessly, for example, um, that gets pretty vague in terms of just holding doors open for folks uh, in terms of um, making it a class C felony. Um, so I'm, I tend to be more in agreement with the public defender's opposition on this particular measure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Senator Favela? No, okay. Uh, Vice Chair, then for the vote. Um, members, uh, was this as is or? Uh, yes, as is, 428. Thank you. Voting on SB 428, the recommendation, uh, 428 SD1, recommendation is to pass this measure on amended. Noting the reservations of Senator Acasio. Actually, no. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Noting opposition. the no vote of Senator Acasio. Is there any no other opposition? Vote. Okay, we have no votes for Senators Favela and Acasio. Any other no votes? Any reservations? Seeing none, Chair, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is SB 537, recognize American Sign Language as a fully developed autonomous natural language with its own grammar, syntax, vocabulary, and cultural heritage. Uh, recommendation here is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Should we roll call this one? For, uh, SB 537 unamended, noting all members are present, any no's or reservation. Recommendation adopted. All right, if thank you. you. Sign to vote on this one. If I knew how, I would. I can't, I think I did, no, never mind. Uh, I'm moving on to SB 538 relating to the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. This clarifies the meaning of program or activity receiving state financial assistance, includes cases from this, within the scope of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act from the jurisdiction of the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Uh, recommendation here is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members of SB 538, as is, any reservations or opposition? Seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Thanks very much. Moving on to SB 1291 relating to transportation includes auto cycles equipped with handlebars and the definition of motorcycle in the Hawaii Safety Act exempts motorcycles and motor scooters with a roll bar, roll cage, or fully enclosed cabs from the safety helmet requirement. Uh, recommendation here is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 1291, SD1 passing as is. Any no's or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 1343, removes acreage restrictions on leases of Hawaiian homelands for agricultural purposes, provides that the availability of the foregoing leases shall be subject to the availability of suitable tracts of land, specifies that the foregoing lease may be for profit or for nonprofit. Recommendation on this one is to I think it's fair to say there's some controversy involved here. So I, I would suggest we put a bad date on it, May 6, 2137, and move it along for further discussion. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 1343, the Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, members, any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Moving on to SB 153, establishes penalties for violations of the ignition interlock law, uh, requires proof of compliance with the ignition interlock law to be available, uh, eligible to apply for a driver's license. Um, uh, 
Well, I'm just realizing that the uh, the chair of transportation is here. So I'm going to go uh, off script here for a second. So Chair Lee, would you be amenable to an amendment that said to, uh, to amend 291E5 to provide ignition interlock installment and services to qualifying individuals free of charge? Currently, it's partially financed by DOT. Amend HRS 291E61 to double the revocation the revocation time for those who do not own a vehicle in which to place an ignition interlock system device. And then on section one, page one, state that no person whose driver's license has been revoked and has an ignition interlock installed in all vehicles that person owns or drives. I don't know, this is probably too much to digest on the fly. It's, um... I don't have it right in front of me, but I, I trust your judgment on it. And it sounds, I think, in line with what the original intent was. So okay. I'd, be, I'd be amenable. Okay. Maybe so just keep an effective date on it. Yep, yeah, sure. Um, let's see, does it have it? Yes, it does have an effective date already. So, okay, so here's the amendments that I'll propose. We'll amend HRS 291E5 to provide ignition interlock installment and services to qualifying individuals free of charge, currently partially financed by DOT. Uh, we'll amend HRS. 291E61B4 to double the revocation time for those who do not own a vehicle in which uh, time to place in, in which to place an ignition interlock device. And then add to section one, page one, line eight, that no person whose driver's license has been revoked under section 291E61 or 291E61.5. And this would be the new language and has an ignition interlock installed in all vehicles that person owns or drives. And we take out section two, number seven. And as I mentioned, it still have the defective date. Other questions or concerns? Uh, I did, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I just had a quick question. I don't know if either you or, or Senator Lee can address. In reading the language, I'm seeing that it, it's stating if your license was revoked, but then you have to have the interlock for a certain amount of time uh, with you know, with patterns of success, obviously, um, how does one do that if they have their license revoked? It doesn't specify in in the actual bill. Sorry, there, there's a oh, uh, Carl, did you want to jump? No, Sorry. no, I, we were trying to address something else with the amendment, so go ahead. Okay, no, no, I was going to say there, uh, the bill isn't all encompassing, so there are other sections of law that apply that are not referenced in the bill, and I can okay. you know walk through um, that. I think after this, okay. if you're Okay. No, no, I, I didn't see the references and that's why I was wondering if how that actually happened. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 153 SB 1. The recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is SB 191. This provides a process for associations to incorporate power of sale language into governing documents, clarifies the legislative intent. The explicit grant of power of sale to associations is not required for the purposes of enforcing association liens under the association alternate power of sale foreclosure process. A uh, recommendation here is to pass with technical amendments. Questions, concerns? Um, it's not Oh, sorry. Senator no, I, I just wanted to voice that um, I, I feel like um, this gives way too much power to condo associations in terms of especially specific instances where it might be a kupuna who's having a hard time paying these, um, you know, increased association fees. And yet um, then, you know, they could possibly have in their their home taken from them or or such in a, in a way that violates original binding contracts um, when the anyway. So it, so I'll, I'll be voting in opposition. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other you. questions or concerns? If not, Senator Kaokaloli, excuse me, excuse me. <clears throat> Members voting on SB 191, SB 1. The recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting the opposition of Senator Ocasio, are there any other no votes? No vote. No vote for Senator Favela as well. Any other no's or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 211, requires that the Hawaiian version of the law be held binding if the law in question was originally drafted in Hawaiian and, that, and then translated into English. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. 
questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. SB 211, SD1, passing unamended. Uh, are there any no's? Any reservations? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 219. This imposes extended terms of imprisonment for certain offenses against property rights committed on agricultural lands. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with an amendment of uh, two amendments. We'll put on a, a delayed effective date, May 6, 2137, and we'll change the mens rea for being on ag land to negligence. So that, so in the pecking order of uh, uh, state of mind, uh, strict liabilities, which is what is in here now, means it doesn't matter what you're thinking. Um, you're you're on the hook. Negligent is the next one up, so you, you, you have to just be not careful. And so this would be the lowest level of, of um, mens rea other than strict liability. Uh, the reason being, it, we don't use strict liability very much in the criminal code, and it's usually reserved for really extreme situations. This may, become, this may be becoming an extreme situation, I don't know, but I'd like to go with negligent for now. Questions or concerns? Senator Costner. Uh, I'm gonna be voting in opposition um, for this one, uh, particularly because it, it seems like it can unfairly um, uh, target certain populations, uh, maybe specifically homeless, et cetera. But um, also um, in consideration to erasing the, the, the charges, um, it, it, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't convinced that it's a justification. There's justification for that. Um, and uh, anyway, so thank you. Okay. Yeah. You re represent some more. Well, I guess you have that you have town. So uh, that's, that's an irrelevant comment. Uh, any other comments or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 219 SD1. The recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, noting the no vote of Senator Ocasio, are there any other no votes? No vote for me too. Uh, no vote for Senator Favela. Any other no votes? Any reservation? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you members. Next up is SB 241 relating to medical cannabis, authorizes qualifying patients and qualifying out-of-state patients to transport cannabis between islands of the state for personal medical use. Uh, recommendation here is just put a bad date on it, May 6, 2137. This, this debate has been going on for some time. I, I'm pretty sure that other states that have islands fly medical Pakalolo out to those islands. Uh, I was met someone at, a, uh, I believe, a, a California state legislator at a conference who said, yes, they fly them to the, uh, those island, the Channel Islands down off the south coast of, of, of California. So I'd like to at least keep it going for further discussion because I think it is likely that it's allowable. Questions or concerns? Yeah, I'll just say it's high time this bill passed. Okay. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Vice Chair, for the vote. Members, uh, SB 241, passing with amendments. Are there any reservations? Are there any no votes? Uh, seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Moving on to SB 347 relating to litter control. This prohibits the in, uh, intentional release of balloons inflated with a gas that is lighter than air. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 347 SD1. The recommendation is to pass on amended. Uh, any no votes? Any reservations? Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Next is SB 560, establishes ranked choice voting for special federal elections and special elections of vacant county council seats. It goes farther than some people want to go and not as far as other people, so I think it's a good place to start. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, SB 560, passing as is. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 565 expands the definition of beer to specify an alcohol by volume of no less than 0.5% and to include alcoholic seltzer beverages. It's one of my favorite bill titles of the session. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, SB 565, SD1 passing as is. Any reservations? Any opposition? 
Reservations, sorry. Re reservations for Senator Favela. Any other reservations or opposition? Seeing none, Chair. Recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is SB 700 uh, relating to search and rescue requires government entities to seek reimbursement for all or a portion of the search and rescue expenses for persons who require escape rescue after leaving a hiking trail to enter a prohibited area or hiking on a trail close to the public. Uh, it's an interesting mix of people opposed and in, in favor in this one. Um, I do, I would like to keep the conversation going. So I'm going to suggest that we put on a, a delayed effective date, May 6, 2137, and continue the discussion. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members SB 700, SB 1, passing with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any opposition? Chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. I think that's the end of the, all the agendas. Staff, am I missing anything? Jesse, Elena? Those are correct. You're okay. done. We're done. Uh, we have Chair. a- Sorry, go ahead, Senator Kim. Hearing, hearing on Friday, no hearing tomorrow, right? No, we have a hearing tomorrow. We do uh, have a hearing a DM, tomorrow. But we do not have one on Friday. Okay. So uh, it sure. shouldn't be quite as long. It should just, I think it's, I think we just have one agenda tomorrow. So it won't be quite as tedious. Okay, thank you. I didn't find it tedious, but I can see why other people would. Okay. All right, thanks very much. See you guys at caucus in session.